What's up, everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and I've got another sound design and sampling video here for you today. This video is actually going to be the start of a new ongoing series about creating your own custom sampler instruments. Sampler is a really deep dive, and honestly, I could probably create a 50 video course just on Sampler alone. Although instead of going through things pragmatically and breaking down each function in Sampler one by one, I'd rather focus on creating instruments, which is really what the magic of Sampler is. And then eventually we will explore all of Sampler's capabilities along the way. For this first video, I'm going to introduce you to slicing up samples and loading them into Sampler using the optimized map setting, which will automatically map each of the notes to its proper pitch. And then we'll go into Sampler and tweak the mapping settings and then design a custom instrument with effects. For today's video, I've recorded some DI electric guitar samples in advance. These are played on the 12th fret and 19th fret harmonics on a seven string baritone guitar. And I'm going to turn these harmonics into a plucked synth keyboard type instrument. I do have some mistakes in here that I need to edit out, but these harmonics are going to serve as my sound source. When you get up in the upper range, they're a little more, a uh, little more dreamy sounding. And so the goal here is to cut these up, drop them into Sampler, map each of the samples in the most basic way. Sampler has a lot of like really super advanced functions like velocity layers, round robin, alternating samples, uh, groups, uh, you know, or you can set up articulations and things like that in there. Um, this is going to be sort of like a primer into uh, multi sampling with Sampler. And then maybe later on, I'll do some more advanced sampler videos. So the first thing I need to do is I really just need to edit these. And the way I played these is I had each sample playing for four bars. And I don't think that all of the samples are following that. And there are some uh, mistakes in there as well that I'll need to edit out. But for now, uh, what I can do is I can turn on flex time, click here to turn on flex, go to slicing mode, and then what you can do is right click up here, control click and select slice at transient markers, or you can create your own custom shortcut for this like I did. So you don't have to go into flex time to access this. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna slice all of those at the transients. And I've completely turned off flex time. That's the last you'll see of it in this video. And what I can do at this point is I can kind of trim these up. So I'm trying to get each sample to be roughly four bars in length. And there are some mistakes in here as well that you can see. So while I'm finishing up these edits, getting rid of all my mistakes and trimming up these samples, I'm going to take a moment and tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Boombox. If you're a musician, producer, or audio engineer, this platform is a must have. Boombox streamlines everything you need into one easy to use platform, including file storage, collaboration, and promotion. With Boombox, you can securely store your tracks, stems, and even full DAW sessions. Collaborating has never been easier. You can invite others to join your projects and give them the ability to leave time-stamped feedback. Plus, you can create personalized inboxes for clients to upload their files directly to you. Boombox offers a customizable artist profile where you can showcase your work, connect with other artists from around the world. Oh, and don't forget about Boomba AI, your personal assistant. This includes a stem splitter, MIDI chord generator, lyric writing assistant, and more. If you're ready to transform your creative process, visit boombox.io today and sign up to get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so I've got all the samples here. You can do some of the editing on, you know, in sampler if you prefer, or you can trim these up further. You can add fades to them if you like, and the fade will be imported into sampler. I'm gonna show you how to do it in sampler so we don't have to mess with these. But if you just drag over all of these and drag them onto the track header area, you'll get two different options for sampler, chromatic map and optimized map. So the chromatic map's only gonna work if all of the notes are chromatic, which these are not. But if you use the optimized map, what this will do is it'll actually sense the pitch of each of the samples and map it to the correct key. It'll map it to the correct zone um, and uh, set the range of each of the samples. So you can see that each sample has been properly mapped here already. Okay. 
Okay, so a couple things I want to do to this. I want to make this more of like a plucked instrument. I want to give it some ambience. And I also want to fade up uh, quite a bit of these samples. So the, what I'm going to do is go to the mapping page, go to the zones here. You just click here on this Z. This will give you a list of all of the samples that were imported. You can see they've all been mapped to a specific pitch. They have a key range and they've all been fine tuned to be in key. It's also set the volume to plus 12. So I think I'm going to pull that down a little bit. So otherwise, I think we're going to clip a bit. So if you select a sample, it'll show you down here in the zone uh, page or the zone editor that specific sample. And what you can do is you can trim up the back end of the samples. So this is A2. That's A1. There's A2. And so what you can do is you can find a natural stopping point for the sample and you can add a fade for it. And then what you can do is you can copy this setting over to all of the other samples. You're going to go up here to view and you're going to go to visible zone list columns and you're going to make sure that the sample option is shown. And this is going to show you the start and end point of the sample along with any fade ins or fade outs that you add. So what I'm going to do is double click on the end point on this first one, hold shift and select the others and then just hit command V to paste in and then hit return. And that'll apply that same trim to all of the other samples. And then I can do the same thing with the fade out. I can copy the fade out value, double click, command V to paste, hit return. And that should add it to all of the other ones. What's going on with this one right here? Oh, you know what it is? I think this one accidentally got the loop turned on. That's why it's doing that. So I turned off the loop and uh, I should be able to do that now. There we go copy and paste the fade out and there we go. So I must have accidentally clicked on loop at some point. So now each of the samples are much shorter, but I also want these to be one shots, which means that the sample is just going to play from beginning to end, regardless of how long I hold the key down. So you, there's no need to actually like hold the keys with this instrument. And if you're building your own instrument and your samples are long sustained tones, you likely will not want to turn on the one shot option. I only use this for drums and sort of more percussive plucked sounds. And even then you don't necessarily have to use one shot. Okay, so let's go up to the synth page here. I do want to create a bit of a uh, an envelope though, um, where you know you can pull down the, the sustain and then pull it out a little bit. There we go. Yeah, so if you want to make those even shorter, you can play around with the uh, the envelope here and you know pull the sustain all the way down and then pull out the decay, your desired length. Um, you could probably have done that without even adding the fades, uh, but I, I just like to add the fades. As far as modulation controls are concerned, I don't think we're going to use any of this. I'm just going to turn those off. And then I'm just going to save this as an instrument. So I'll just call this guitar harmonics. There we go. And then let's start adding effects because this is really where the sound, like the, the ambient sound design comes from. All right, so we're already getting somewhere. I'm gonna filter out some of the bottom end and I'm really gonna kind of bring out the mid top end a bit. I also like to saturate this a little bit. I could even add a guitar amp to it if I want to get more of that uh, amped type tone. In fact, let me try that out. I'm just gonna go with uh, Amp Designer and I'll probably use this amp. This is uh, one of the better sounding clean amps in Logic. Yeah, it gives it some nice uh, character. 
And then I've, of course, got the EQ on there. Let's add Chroma Glow. This is under Distortion. Here it is. Let's just give this even some even more like texture, just uh, a little more of, you know, a little more grit to it. Let's use the magnetic mode. This could also use a compressor. So let's add the compressor after the EQ just to control those peaks. Try the studio FET for this. Um, and let's move on to reverb and delays and things like that. Um, let's try the stereo delay. So I get two different channels of delay. Instead of a quarter note and eighth note, let's maybe try like a dotted eighth note. Cool. I like the dotted eighth with the 16th. Again, filtering it out, mostly uh, just the, the mid-range in the delays. And let's move on to some uh, reverb. You can use any reverb you want. I am going to use the Raum reverb from Native Instruments. I just really like this one for synthy, spacey tones. But you could just as easily use Chromaverb or Space Designer. Let's convert this to MIDI and let's play around with this pattern a little bit more. I, I know I just used session, uh, the session players for this, but I don't think that's, I think, is that the lowest note? I mean, it's, it's, it's transposing the notes or, or extrapolating the note down, but I think we can maybe get away with doing some octaves here in the bass, maybe something like that. See if I can play something on top of this. Okay, that's kind of cool. There was one little note in there I didn't like though. Ah, right there, that makes sense. Um, so that is, what is that? That is a G chord. So it's G, B, D. I could, I guess I could go down to D there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and quantize these. I think they're all eighth notes. Okay, so off screen, I did a bunch of stuff. I separated the plucked arpeggios from the melody, and then I also created a separate track for those ambient bass tones and really transformed the ambient bass tones into its own thing. So breaking this up into three separate tracks lets me apply three different types of effects. And then that's sort of like a counter melody 
uh, once the beat kicks in. I added in a separate bass instrument not related to the uh, sampler instrument, a drum beat and a topper loop. Now, before I play you this, let me show you how you can save your instruments so you can recall them for later. So let's say I want to save my uh, plucks and my ambient tones. I can select that track, open up the library. You can open up the library by pressing Y, then go down to save, and then give this a name. So I'm just gonna call this harmonic plucks, and then I'm gonna call this one harmonic ambient tones. So harmonic ambient tones. And then if I ever want to recall those for later, you'll find them right here under user patches in the library. Okay, and finally off screen, I made a few more tweaks mainly to flesh out the arrangement and a few minor mixed tweaks as well. So let's give this a listen. And there you go, that's how you can create your own custom sampler instruments by dragging and dropping in a set of non-chromatic samples and using the optimized map in sampler. I hope this video has maybe inspired you or given you some ideas to go out and create your own instrument. Nothing I'm doing here is set in stone. You don't have to do anything the way I did it. Just go out there, find some source samples that have multiple samples, not just one sample, maybe grandma's old piano or grandma's old organ, or maybe you have an acoustic guitar laying around, or maybe you have a saxophone or a trumpet or some other wind instrument um, from you know high school band that you don't play anymore. Whip that thing out of the closet and try to turn it into your own custom instrument. What I love about this process is I'm getting a result that no one else has. So it, it takes a fair amount of experimentation, you know, to come up with something that actually sounds good and usable within a song, but it's not quite as hard as you might think it would be. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.